So, how far we have completed in the last lecture? Redundant frame. Okay. Redundant frame, I think we have covered. Covered. Okay. So, now the next point is the assumptions while analyze, analyzing the trust that we will see now what assumptions are made while analyzing the trust so assumptions assumptions made in the analysis in the analysis of frame or trust. So yesterday only we have see, seen that how the trust is look like, then the members of the trust, then what is joint, then what is perfect frame, what is imperfect frame, then imperfect frame is again divided into two types. Deficient frame and redundant frame. So all we have studied this uh, this bit in the last lecture. Now the next is assumptions made in the analysis of frames or trust. See, while we are uh, calculating something, the forces coming on the structure, we are analyzing the structure, we made some assumptions. So those assumptions, I will write now one by one and we will discuss one by one. Okay. So the first assumption. <clears throat> The cross section, the cross section of the member of the member is uniform, is uniform throughout its length, throughout its length okay so it is very simple whatever the member is there now suppose this is a pain okay this is a pain you can see now the cross section of this pain whatever the section is there it is prismatic section so the cross section is same throughout the pain okay if you cut the pain at this level if you cut the pain in between somewhere then you will get same cross section you will get same cross section so this is the assumption made in the analysis of the truck Sometimes the members are provided with different cross sections. Suppose now I will draw the diagram. See, this is a member, rectangular member. If I draw, this is the cross section, and the length of member will be like this. Okay, this member, this is the length. Okay, I will not draw full diagram. Okay, so now you can understand. So this type of member will be there. This is called as the prismatic member, or we can say that the cross section is same. Now, these are the cross sectional dimensions. This is B, this is D, and this is L. So, if you cut this, uh, say, cut this member from here, from here, that is your section 1 1, you will get same cross section which is there at the start. If you cut from here also, 2 2, you will get same cross section you will get same cross section. So this is called as the uniform cross section throughout the length. This is our assumption. Sometimes the member may be like this. Suppose now the initial cross section, it is like this. This is the initial cross section. And now it is increases. Length of the member is increases. In this side also, maybe. And in this side also, it may be like this. Okay. So if I join, Just a moment. Yes. It may be like this also. This is the cross section. Now you can see if I join this, this may go in this way also. Okay. I will draw freely this way also. So you can see now the cross section and this side also obviously i don't have the space to join okay this works 
So now here you can see from this part, whenever you make a cut, okay, it will not be uniform cross section. The cross section at this point is different. At second point, if you take a cut, it is different. At third type, if you take a cut, it is different. So this is these are called as non-prismatic members, which I have shown in the red. It is non-prismatic members, and in blue, it is prismatic members. Prismatic members means the cross section is same throughout the length. Okay, the cross section is same throughout the length. So the first assumption is cross section of the member is uniform throughout the length. So we assume that all members are these types of members. These types of members are not there in the truss. Okay, but practically these types of members are exist. But still we assume that all the members are having uniform cross section. Okay, so this is the assumption. So this is our first assumption. So the cross section of the member is same throughout its length. Now the second assumption is. So the second assumption is the load is acting at joints only. The load is acting acting at joints only. Okay. So load it will it is not acting at intermediate level anywhere. The load is acting only at the joints on the truck. That is what we are considering. Okay, joints. I have already told you what is joint. Whenever two or more than two members are meeting at a point, then that point is called a joint. And in a truss, we assume that load is acting only at the joint. Okay, this is the second assumption. Then the third assumption is the self weight. The self weight. Of the member, the self weight of the member is neglected. Is neglected. Okay, so this is very simple. So while analyzing the truss, we find uh, find out whether the member member is carrying tensile force or compressive force. Okay, but while doing that, so we haven't considered the self weight of the member. Okay, or we won't consider the self weight of the member. So the self weight of the member is neglected. This is the third assumption. And the fourth assumption is all the joints, all the joints in the frame, all the joints in the frame are are assumed to be are assumed to be pin joints. Pin joints. Okay, so all joints are pin joints. So these are the four assumptions which which is made while analyzing the truss. So what are the four assumptions? First, the member should be the prismatic member. That is, the cross section of the member is uniform throughout the length. Second thing is that load is acting at only joints. Okay, load is acting only at the joints. No, no any uh, on any other portion the load is acting. Only at the joints it is acting. Third is the self weight of the member. We neglect the self weight of the member. We won't consider the what is the self weight of the member. Okay, the members so that's upon that the weight as narena. Jaha tu mi connect karta hai trust ma the member the avela. So that load self weight of the member is neglected. Okay, and all the joints which are there in the truss or in the frame, we assume that all are pin joints. All are pin joints. Okay, so it will not that joint will not move vertically. That joint will not move horizontally, but it will allow to rotate. That is the pin joint. Okay, so these are the assumptions while analyzing the truss. Now the next thing is that nature of forces in truss. Nature of forces in truss. So basically, in the truss, there are two types of forces which are getting developed. One is the compressive force, another is the tensile force. Okay, so I will write here. You also copy down this important. The members of truss, the members of truss or frame, 
or frame are subjected to are subjected to either either compressive forces either compressive forces or or tensile forces either compressive forces or tensile forces okay while analyzing the frame while analyzing while analyzing the frame the tensile forces the tensile forces are considered as positive and compressive forces compressive forces are considered as negative and the compressive forces are considered as negative okay so now how to show the tensile forces and compressive forces that i will show you the sign symbol so now these are the two members okay these are the two members suppose now the name of this member is ab so this is your joint a and this is the joint b the name of the member is ab ab is the name of the member okay now suppose uh, in this member ab tensile force is developed tensile force is developed then how we will show that tensile force is there by looking at this member how we can get that in this member the tensile force is there so there should be some uh, what we can say some sign should be there by after seeing the member the diagram you can say that no in this member the tensile force is there or in this member the compressive force is there so if member ab carries a tensile force then for a tensile force you should always show the arrow away from the joint you should always show the arrow away from the joint in first unit also i have told you already whenever the tensile force is there the arrow is should be away from the joint away from the point or away from the body and whenever the compressive force is there the arrow should be towards the joint towards the body or towards the point okay now see i i am i am thinking that on this ab tensile force is there so for the tensile force arrow should be away from the joint now see this is my joint a so my arrow must be like this this is the away from the joint arrow this arrow is away from the joint okay you can see the arrow head is pointing away okay with respect to a it is away from the joint okay and for with respect to joint b the arrow must be like this away from the joint arrow should be away from the joint so this is the sign which indicates that the member ab carries tensile force the member ab carries tensile force okay so now here you can see this is my joint a and from joint a i have shown the arrow away from the joint this is my joint b and from joint b i have shown the arrow away from the joint so it indicates that the force in member ab is the force in member ab is tensile force the force in member ab is tensile force similarly if i think about this cd suppose now ab and the second member is cd okay. now i am saying that in member cd compressive force is there so how we are going to show the compressive force then again for the compressive force now these are our joints this is joint c this is joint d so arrow should be towards the joint so it should be towards the joint so from c the arrow must be like this towards the joint okay compressive arrow must be towards the joint it will be like this towards the joint and with respect to point d or joint d arrow must be towards the joint 
this type of arrow will be there towards the joint. Okay. So whenever you see these types of arrows, then you can easily say that the member is carries compressive force. So here I can say that FCD carries which type of force? Compressive force. This is compressive force. So in this way, we are going to show the tensile force in the member or compressive force in the member. See here, you can see the difference, how these arrows are shown, how these arrows are shown. This is the arrow head. This is the arrow head. And this is called as tail. Okay, back portion. Okay. And here, this is the arrow head is on this side. This is the arrow head. Okay, here also, this is called as arrow head. Okay, this is called as arrow head. So in this way, we show the arrow. Okay, so remember that whenever the tensile force, if you analyze the member and you got that the member carries the tensile force, the arrow should be away from the joint. And after analyzing, you got the compressive force in the member, then you should show the arrow towards the joint. Okay, these are the sign conventions. These are the nature of the forces in truss or frith. Is there any doubt in this? Because this is important. The understanding of this is very important. Is there any problem in this? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. If no problem is there, then we will move further. See now. The process or frames are analyzed by three methods. First is the method of joints. First method is called as method of joints. Second method is called as method of section. And third method is a graphical method. Graphical method is not there for you here. So method of joints and method of sections. These are the two methods. By using that, we are going to calculate the forces in the trusses. Okay. Forces in the members of the trusses or members of the frame that we are going to calculate. So first of all, we will see the numericals by method of joints. Okay. First of all, we will see all the numericals by method of joints. So there are two methods I already told you. First method to solve the truss is method of joints. Method of joints. And the second method is method of section. Method of section. And third method is graphical method. Third is graphical method. Okay. So now, right now, we are going to solve the numerical by using this method of joints. Now we will take the numericals by method of joints. Okay. So now, I will take the problem. And then we will solve it. I will show you how to solve this. Find, find the forces, find the forces in the member of trust, in the members of trust shown below, shown below, okay. Now I will draw the truss. You also draw it. Okay. So this type of truss is given to us. I will give the name and it is called as cantilever truss. 
because here a fixed support is provided and other end is free so if one end is fixed and other end is free then it is called as cantilever truss okay now i will give the name this is a b c joint d and this is e e now the forces are acting at the joints only so the forces will be given at the joints only so at this joint c there is a downward force of 40 kN at joint d also there is downward force of 40 kN okay so only these two uh, these two forces are given so here the force is of 40 kN and here also it is 40 kN and then the dimensions are given so this distance this is how much 3 meter this is 3 meter and this rest of the distance is also 3 meter this is also 3 meter okay and the height of truss it is also given as 3 meter this height this is also given as 3 meter so this is the given problem okay so once you see the problem you should able to identify the members and the joints members and the joints okay so now we start from b so b is the joint okay so at joint b how many members are there ba is one member be then bd and bc so b is a joint then if you see this point e c so c is also joint why because at point c you can see member cb is there and member cd is there so two members are meeting at this point so this is a joint at point d you can see three members are there db de and dc so point d is also joint at point e point e is joint or not you tell me point e is it a joint yes sir yes why yes. it is a joint why it is a joint member e b and e d are attached okay so member eb and ed are attached or are meeting at this point e now come to point a point a is joint or not point a is a joint no sir no, sir. no. why it is not a joint because at this point a only the member ab is there what is the definition of joint at least two two or more members should meet at that point so here at point a only ab member is there there is no other member so a is not a joint okay a is not a joint now we need to solve this truss so as i have already told you in a truss only two types of forces are exist in the member one is the tensile another is the compressive that only we need to find out ata shuruvat kashi karaychi now how to start okay now see this type of truss is the cantilever truss so there is no supports are given at c and e only the support is given over here it is fixed truss okay one end is fixed another end is free here there is no support given anywhere so this is a cantilever truss so in any type of truss the first thing you should look is type of supports which type of support is it, it is given so cantilever truss is given first thing is over second thing you should see that while analyzing the truss by method of joints while analyzing the truss by method of joints we can use only two equations summation fx equal to 0 and summation fy equal to 0 these are our equations of equilibrium summation m about any point it is also the equation of equilibrium so we are having three equations of equilibrium out of these three equations equation these two equations are useful to us this equation also we can use but it will not give you uh, give us anything by solving the truss it is very helpful while solving the beams but while solving the truss we are individually taken the free body diagram of every joint i will show you how these two equations are equilibrium are uh, useful 
and why this equation is not useful while solving the truss. So initially, what you need to do, you have to search a joint which is having only two unknowns. Asa joint could kai sir pailanda ki ja joint la kiti unknown asala paije, do na sa unknown asala paije. Okay. Maasa joint putlay bagai ta ta. Samza me to udkai laglo ki B joint la zar me lo. So B joint la kiti member se B A B B D and B C. Four members se. Maje four unknown hai. Aple la putlay member matla force mai thi katta nae mai thi. We don't know the force in any of the member. So if I go to joint B. I am having four unknowns, so I can't solve this joint. If I go to joint D, I will see here three members are there at joint D. Okay, so I am not able to solve the joint D because I want only two unknowns. So now if I move to joint C, now if I move to joint C, now C at joint C, there are two members, C B and C D, which are unknown. Okay, and we are having these two equations, f x and f y. So we can solve this joint C first. We can solve the joint C first, and later on we will solve other joints. So much like identify, how to do it? Ask a joint to do it. If that joint like which unknown is there, please do an unknown is there, please. You should search a joint, and you have to search a, uh, such a joint that it is having only two unknowns. So now see, this is the my joint C. Now I will draw free body diagram of this joint C. So to draw the free body diagram, what you what needs to do first? I will draw this line. This is the dotted vertical line and dotted horizontal line. Okay. So this is my point C, vertical line and horizontal line. This is my point C. Now, if you look at this point C, if you look at this point C, there is a downward load of forty kilonewton. So that I will show over here. So here is a Downward load. Here is the downward load, and the value of this load is four zero forty kilonewton. Okay. Now, if you come again over here, here is the horizontal member CD. CD is the horizontal member. Okay. This is the horizontal member CD, but we don't know the force in the member CD. So initially, what we will assume. We will assume that CD carries a tensile force. Initially, we will assume that it carries a tensile force. All the members initially we will assume that they carry tensile force. And if we get the negative answer, then we will uh, see that it is not. A, we will say that it is not a tensile. It is a compressor. In that way, we will solve the problem. Now, see, we are now drawing the free body diagram of joint C, and we are assuming that the CD carries the tensile force. So I will show the member CD like this. See how I am going to show the member CD. So this is my member CD. This is my member CD. Okay, this is my member CD. And I will say that this is F CD force in member CD, and it is tensile. So here you can see I have shown the arrow away from the joint, from joint C. I have shown the arrow away from the joint. Similarly, when you see this member CB, now we are drawing the free body diagram of joint C. So this member CB is an inclined member, and we don't know what is the force in that member. So we will assume that the force is tensile. Tensile means we should show the arrow away from joint C. So here, in that direction, I will draw one more member. So this is the next member. And this member, I will call this as F. What is the name? C B. This is my member F C B. This is the free body diagram of joint C. I will write here F B D free body diagram of joint C. This is the free body diagram of joint C. Okay. Now we have to solve this. Now come to come over here. See this. This is 90 degree angle. This angle is 90 degree angle. This angle is also 90 degree angle because this is vertical member. This is horizontal member. So angle must be 90 degree. Now this height, BD. This height must be equal to A. So this is three meter. So this is three meter. So this BD must be also three meter. 
Now this is 90 degree angle. This side is 3 meter. This CD is also 3 meter. So this will become isosceles right angle triangle. Okay. So if this angle is 90 degree, then this angle must be of 45 degree. This angle is must be of 45 degree. And this angle is also 45 degree. This angle is also 45 degree. Okay, and then as a curve muscle to sir use karaita. Now I want to find out this. This is my hypotenuse. Okay. So if I want to find out this angle, opposite side is known to me, adjacent side is known to me. I can use tan of theta. Okay. Tan of theta c. Let us call this as theta c. You can say opposite side. Opposite side is 3 divided by adjacent side. Adjacent side is also 3. So theta c is equal to tan inverse of 1. And tan inverse of 1 is nothing but it is 45 degree. So you will get this angle is same, 45 degree. So I will mark that angle over here. So over this angle, it is 45 degree. Now this horizontal is our x-axis, vertical is y-axis. Now here FCB is the inclined member. So we should resolve the inclined member. We should resolve the inclined member. <laughs> Okay, so now this angle is 45 degree and this is FCB. So we have to resolve this FCB. So how we are going to resolve it? So we will draw from this is our point of application. This is our joint one line parallel to Y similar resolution is same everywhere. I have already taught you how to resolve this. Okay. And one line will be along this over here. Okay. So this now the value of this is FCB. We don't know the value. So I will write here FCB. Now this angle is 45 degree. So this horizontal component will become cos and this vertical component will become sine. This is sine 45 and this component will be FCB, FCB cos 45. This is FCB cos 45. Okay. So now we have resolved this CB. We have resolved the CB. Now we will consider its components for the further calculation. We will not consider CB. Instead of that, we will consider its components for the further calculation. Okay, now here, see, if I apply summation Fy equal to 0, now I will apply summation Fy equal to 0, upward forces are plus and downward forces are minus. Upward forces are plus, downward forces are minus. So here you can see if I apply that, then this 40 kN is moving down, so it is minus, minus 40. These two are the horizontal, so it will, will not come in summation Fy. And this is vertical. So it is plus Fcb sine of 45. Some play member, which is equal to 0. Now if I send to this 40 to that side, then what I will got? Fcb sine of 45 degree, which is equal to how much? 40 plus 40. So therefore, Fcb is equal to 40 divided by sine of 45. So therefore, FCB is equal to, let me know the answer. What is the answer? FCB? 56.56. Can you tell me again? 56.56. So 56. Uh, and it is kilonewton because the 40 is given in kilonewton. So forces are in kilonewton. Uh, now we have got positive. We got positive answer or negative answer? Positive. Positive. What we have assumed initially, our FCB, it is tensile. We have assumed it tensile and we have got positive answer. So our assumption is correct. FCB is a tensile, uh, carries a tensile force of 56.56 kilonewton. FCB carries a tensile force of 56.56 kilonewton. Okay. So this is the value of FCB tensile. So here I will go to main diagram. 
here this is the main diagram now i come to know that cb cb carries which type of force cb carries tensile force so tensile force means arrow must be away from the joint so here from c joint i will show the arrow away so this is the arrow okay this is the arrow and for with respect to b joint it should be also away because the tensile force is there so arrow must be away so this in this way i am showing here the arrow and the magnitude of this is 56.56 okay again come to the joint here now fcd so to calculate fcd now what i will do i will apply summation fx equal to 0 summation fx equal to 0 forces towards right i will take it as positive forces towards left i will take it as negative okay forces towards left i will take it as negative so now if i consider that and if i apply fcd fcd is moving towards left so it is minus minus fcd this is fcd is the this member okay again this fcb cos 45 it is also moving towards left so minus fcb cos 45 cos 45 which is equal to Zero. Okay. So therefore, if I send to FCD to that side, then FCD will become plus. FCD is equal to okay minus FCB. What is the value of FCB? Fifty six point fifty six into cos of forty five. So at the last, after solving, what you will get after solving this joint? Minus forty. Okay. So here I will write. Here only. So this is FCD. FCD is equal to minus forty kilo newton. Okay. Now see here. Initially, what we have assumed FCD carries tensile force. Okay. We have assumed that FCD carries tensile force. But the force in member CD is minus forty. So what does this minus sign indicates to us? What is the meaning of minus sign? compressive force okay correct so the minus sign says us that you have assumed it is tensile but the minus sign tells us that it is not tensile it is compressive so the final answer i should write fcd the magnitude is correct 40 kilo newton but it is not tensile it is compressive so in bracket i am writing c so fcd is not tensile fcd is compressive so again i will go to main diagram here and now i have solved this fcd and the force nature of force in the fcd is compressive so it is compressive that is why i will show arrow towards the joint or away from joint for compressive for compressive it should be towards the joint okay towards the joint correct now member cd is there now this is my joint c so i will show the arrow towards the joint so the arrow will be like this with respect to c and with respect to joint d I, again arrow must be towards the joint so arrow will be like this this is the direction of the arrow okay so this indicates that fcd is the compressive okay now we have solved this joint now you can see this diagram and now let me know if you are having any doubt any difficulty we have solved this procedure we have to repeat for every joint ji ji tumhala atta mi ji procedure sangitla evdas tumhala repeat karaycha pratyek joint sathi ani pratyek joint madle unknown members je ahet tanche aplyala value ani nature bagaycha kasa ite we we are going to analyze that so now this is the joint c three body diagram of joint c and how we have solved joint c is is anybody is having any doubt in this kudala ka adchan hai ka icha madhe fcd 39.99 ale 39.99 manje 40 jale ki hai what is the difference in between 40 and 39.99 it is same answer ओके एंड माइनस आलाय म्हणूनच कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह लिहिलं नाही तर पुढे मायनस सेन म्हणजे काय तुम्ही इनिशियली एफ सी डीला काय सांगितलं टेन्साईल म्हणून अॅरो अवे फ्रॉम जॉईंट दाखवला अनालिसिस केलं 
आणि अनालिसिस केल्यावर तुम्हाला आन्सर मिळालं मायनस फोर्टी तर आन्सर तुमचं फोर्टीच आहे पण मायनस साईन हे काय इंडिकेट करतंय तर ते एफ सी डी हा टेन्साईल नाही तर एफ सी डी हा कसा आहे कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह मग म्हणून मी तर लिहिलं ना ब्रॅकेटमध्ये कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह हे कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह लिहिलं म्हणजे मायनस साईन दाखवायची गरज नाही परत ओके इथनं तुम्हाला कळत आहे एफ सी डी इज फोर्टी किलो न्यूटन अँड इट इज कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह ओके थर्टी नाईन पॉईंट नाईन्टी नाईन फोर्टी इज सेम काय जास्त डिफरन्स नाही त्याच्यात हा अजून कोणाला काय अडचण आहे का डिफिकल्टी असली तर सांगा की ही स्टेप कळाली नाही ही फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम कशी काढली हे कळलं नाही हे अॅरो बाहेरच का दाखवले हे रिझॉल्युशन काय केलंय कसं ह्या सगळ्या क्वेश्चन जर तुम्हाला कळले असतील तर आपण नेक्स्ट जॉईंट घेऊ कळलं नसलं काय डाऊट असेल तर विचारा इफ यू आर हॅव्हिंग एनी डाऊट यू कॅन आस्क मी राईट नाव एनिबडीज मध्ये मराठीत सांगाल का काय सांगायचं मराठीत सगळं म्हणजे पॉईंट सी पू ठीक आहे एकदा मराठीत सांगतो बघा हा आपल्याला दिलेला ट्रस्ट आहे आपल्याला हा ट्रस्ट सॉल्व करायचा आहे सॉल्व करायचं म्हणजे काय की ह्याच्यातल्या मेंबरमध्ये कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह किंवा टेन्साईल जे काय फोर्सेस असतील ते आपल्याला दाखवायचे आहेत आणि त्याची व्हॅल्यू फाइंड आउट करायचे मग त्याच्यासाठी आपण सुरुवात कशी केली सुरुवातीला मी तुम्हाला सांगितलं की असा जॉईंट फुडका की जिथं फक्त दोनच अननोन असायला पाहिजे ओके मग अशा आपल्याकडे ई जॉईंट पण आहे ना ई जॉईंट पण आहे इथं पण दोनच अननोन आहेत पण ई जॉईंटला इथं सपोर्ट आहे सपोर्ट आहे म्हणजे सपोर्टला सपोर्ट रिएक्शन येणार का नाही मग ते रिएक्शन पकडले तरी तर अननोन वाढतेत म्हणून आपण सॉल्व्ह करू शकत नाही ई जॉईंट बी पण करू शकत नाही डी पण करू शकत नाही बी ला चार मेंबर आहेत डी ला तीन मेंबर आहेत नाही करू शकत ओके ए तर हा जॉईंटच नाही त्यामुळे इकडं बघायचाच विषय नाही ए हा जॉईंटच नाही आहे सी ला गेलो तर सी ला दोन अननोन आहेत म्हणून आपण सुरुवातीला काय केलं सी जॉईंट घेतला मग सी जॉईंट घेतल्यावरती सी जॉईंटची आपण प्री बॉडी डायग्राम ड्रॉ केली सी जॉईंटची प्री बॉडी डायग्राम कशी ड्रॉ केली इथंच दाखवत तुम्हाला ड्रॉ केलेलं नाही बघा ही व्हर्टिकल लाईन अशी घेतली आणि ही हॉरिझॉन्टल लाईन अशी घेतली फक्त हाच सी जॉईंट आपण तिकडे ड्रॉ केलेला आहे मग या सी जॉईंटला कुठले कुठले मेंबर आहेत या सी जॉईंटला इथं फॉर्टी किलोमीटरचा डाऊनलोड फोर्स आहे त्यानंतर याच सी जॉईंटला मेंबर सी बी आहे आणि मेंबर सी डी आहे आता मी इथं अॅरो दाखवलेत पण सुरुवातीला आपल्याला माहित नव्हतं की त्याच्यामध्ये कसले फोर्सेस आहेत म्हणून आपण दोन्हीला काय अजून केलं टेन्साईल अजून केलं म्हणजे ही अशी डायग्राम आली हा सी जॉईंट फॉर्टी किलोमीटर डाऊनलोड एफ सी डी हा पहिला फोर्स सी डी टेन्साईल अजून केला आपण आपल्याला माहित नव्हतं किती फोर्स आहे ते आणि एफ सी बी हा आपण आपण कसा घेतला टेन्साईल घेतला ओके एफ सी बी पण कसं घेतला टेन्साईल आणि त्याच डायरेक्शनला दाखवला ना इथला अँगल किती आहे फोर्टी फायव्ह डिग्री हा फोर्टी फायव्ह कसा आला तर ही हाईट तीन मीटर दिलेली आहे कारण हे तीन मीटर आहे म्हणजे ही हाईट पण तीन मीटर असणार आहे आणि ही लेंथ तुम्हाला दिलेली आहे तीन मीटर आणि हा अँगल नाईन्टी डिग्री आहे तुम्ही इझिली इथला अँगल कॅल्क्युलेट करू शकता थेरम वापरून करा किंवा ट्रिग्नामेट्री वापरून करा तो अँगल आला फोर्टी फाय डिग्री तोच अँगल आपण इथे घेतला ना जॉईंट सीच्या इथं अँगल आहे फोर्टी फाय मग ह्याला काय केलं आपण रिझॉल्व्ह केलं एफ सी बीला रिझॉल्व्ह केल्यावर तुम्हाला दोन कॉम्पोनंट मिळाले एफ सी बी साईन फोर्टी फायव्ह आणि एफ सी बी कॉस फोर्टी फायव्ह आता कॉस आणि साईन कसं घ्यायचं ह्याच्यात तर कुणाला प्रॉब्लेम असू नये खूप वेळेला मी समजून सांगितलंय कसं घ्यायचं ते अँगल बघा अँगल हा ज्या कॉम्पोनंटच्या जवळ आहे त्याला तुम्ही कॉस देणार राहिलेल्याला तुम्ही साईन देऊन टाकणार उरलेला सो दिस हे आपल्याला मिळालं त्यानंतर काय केलं आपण या जॉईंटला समेशन एफ वाय अप्लाय केलं इक्वेशन अँड वेन यू अप्लाय समेशन एफ वाय म्हणजे फोर्सेस पॅरल टू वाय फक्त बघायचे फोर्सेस पॅरल टू वाय म्हणजे हे दोनच फोर्सेस आहेत हे दोघं तर एक्सला पॅरल आहेत सो एफ सी बी अपवर्ड चाललंय प्लस घेतलं फोर्टी डाऊनवर्ड चाललंय मायनस घेतलं सॉल्व्ह केलं ह्याला एफ सी बी तुम्हाला पॉझिटिव्ह आन्सर मिळालं पॉझिटिव्ह आन्सर मिळालं याचा अर्थ काय तुम्ही जे इनिशियली अज्युम केलंय की एफ सी बी हे टेन्साईल आहे तर ते टेन्साईलच आहे म्हणून तुम्हाला पॉझिटिव्ह आन्सर मिळाला ओके सिमिलरली एफ एक्स आपण अप्लाय केलं एफ एक्स म्हणजे काय फोर्सेस पॅरल टू एक्स एक्सेस त्याची सम घेतली आपण तर एफ सी डी हा कुठं चाललाय लेफ्ट साईडला चाललेला आहे हे एफ सी बी कॉस फोर्टी फायव्ह पण लेफ्ट साईडला चाललेलं आहे म्हणून दोन्ही आपण मायनस लिहिले इक्वल टू झिरो कारण हे दोघं तर वायला पॅरल आहेत त्यामुळे या इक्वेशन मध्ये येणार नाहीत ते एफ एक्सच्या हे झालं त्याला सॉल्व्ह केलं एफ सी डी आपण कॅल्क्युलेट केलं एफ सी डीची व्हॅल्यू किती मिळाली आपल्याला मायनस फोर्टी किलो न्यूटन मायनस फोर्टीचा अर्थ काय की एफ सी डीची व्हॅल्यू फोर्टीच आहे फक्त मायनस साईन हे काय सांगतंय तर तुम्ही एफ सी डीला कसा अज्युम केलंय टेन्साल अज्युम केलंय तर ते टेन्साल नाही आहे ते एफ सी डी कसा असायला पाहिजे कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह म्हणून हे मायनस साईन मी काढून टाकलं आणि ह्याच्याऐवजी इथं ब्रॅकेटमध्ये लि
सीबीच नेचर कसं आहे टेन्साईल आहे मग त्याच्यामुळे अॅरो अवे फ्रॉम जॉईंट आता जॉईंट कोण आहेत सी बी म्हणजे इथं दोन जॉईंट आले जॉईंट सी आणि जॉईंट बी मग जॉईंट सी कडून अॅरो कसा दाखवणार आपण अवे फ्रॉम जॉईंट कारण टेन्साईल आहे आणि जॉईंट बी कडून पण अॅरो कसा दाखवा लागणार आपल्याला अवे फ्रॉम जॉईंट कारण हा टेन्साईल आहे सो दिस इज द अॅरो न सिमिलरली सी डी सी डीतला फोर्स किती आला होता फॉर्टी किलोमीटर पण तो कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह होता कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह होता म्हणजे काय तर जॉईंट सी आणि जॉईंट डी तर जॉईंट सी कडे तुम्हाला अॅरो असा दाखवा लागेल टुवर्ड्स द जॉईंट कारण ते कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह आहे अँड विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जॉईंट जॉईंट डी अगेन यू हॅव टू शो टुवर्ड्स द जॉईंट टुवर्ड्स द जॉईंट दाखवा लागेल तुम्हाला कारण तो पण कसं आहे कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह सो हे आपण असं दाखवलेलं आहे ओके सो इन दिस वे वी हॅव सॉल्व दिस जॉईंट सी हा अजून काय अडचण समजलंय का सांगितलेलं मराठीत आता येस सर इज इट क्लिअर टू ऑल ऑफ यू ओके नाव सी नाव अवर जॉईंट सी इज सॉल्ड ओके नाव अवर जॉईंट सी इज सॉल्ड नाव वी विल मूव टू द नेक्स्ट जॉईंट नाव वी कॅन टेक आयदर जॉईंट डी और जॉईंट बी समजा मी विचार केला आता की जॉईंट बी सॉल्व्ह करू आपण ओके सो वेन आय स्टार्ट टू सॉल्व्ह दिस जॉईंट बी then i will uh, i will come to know that here on joint b member ba b and bd three unknowns are there only i know the force in member bc but he three three unknown is so i can't solve it because i am having only two equations summation fx summation fy summation m mala vaparta yet nahi ka vaparta yet nahi ita baga ata mi sangto tumhala ita baga he joint c getlela hai apan we have taken the joint c okay वी हॅव अप्लाइड समेशन एफ वाय झिरो वी हॅव अप्लाइड समेशन एफ एक्स झिरो आता मला सांगा मी जर इथं मुवमेंट अबाउट सी इक्वल टू झिरो हे जर इक्वेशन अप्लाय केलं मुवमेंटचं इक्वेशन कारण मी जॉईंट सी आहे ना इथं जॉईंट सी घेतोय सो मुवमेंट ऍट सी जर अप्लाय केलं मला काय मिळेल काय इक्वेशन मधून काहीच मिळणार नाही का मिळणार नाही सगळे फोर्सेस सी मधनच पास व्हायला गेले आहेत ना ऑल द फोर्सेस सी बी पण सी मधनच पास होत आहे एफ सी डी पण सी मधनच पास होत आहे फोर्टी किलोमीटर पण सी मधनच पास होत आहे मग सगळ्याची मुवमेंट किती येईल झिरो येईल म्हणजे या इक्वेशनचा काही युज आहे का आपल्याला आपल्याकडे आहे इक्वेशन वी आर हॅव्हिंग दॅट इक्वेशन बट इट इज नॉट युजफुल फॉर अस वेन वी आर सॉल्व्हिंग बाय मेथड ऑफ जॉईंट बिकॉज ऑल दिस फोर्सेस इफ यू सी सी बी इट इज ऑल्सो पासिंग थ्रू पॉइंट सी इफ यू सी सी डी इट इज ऑल्सो पासिंग थ्रू पॉइंट सी इफ यू सी दिस फॉर्टी किलोमीटर इट इज ऑल्सो पासिंग थ्रू पॉइंट सी ओके so the perpendicular distance of all these forces from point c is zero that is why the moment of all these forces will become zero so therefore this equation it is not helpful for us okay that is why we only restricted to summation fy0 and summation fx0 madhun mi tumhala sangitle ki asa joint hudka ki jithe unknown kiti asala pahije don karan apan equation don as vapru shakto fx and fy m asun sudha aplyala tacha kay upyog नाही ओके आय होप नाव इट इज क्लिअर टू यू ना ओके सो कम बॅक टू दिस डायग्राम हिअर म्हणजे बी तर मी घेऊ शकत नाही कारण इथं तीन अननोन आहेत मग आता डी जॉईंटचं जर मी विचार केला इफ आय थिंक अबाउट दिस जॉईंट डी नाव ऍट जॉईंट डी देर आर थ्री मेंबर्स बट आउट ऑफ थ्री मेंबर्स नाव आय नो द फोर्स इन मेंबर सी डी सो अननोन कोण कोण राहिलं मग द अननोन साल डी बी अँड डी ई सो ओनली टू मेंबर्स which are unknown, uh, in which we don't know the forces so we can use this we can take joint d for further simplification okay we can take this joint d for further simplification now if i draw the free body diagram of joint d then i will draw it over here to draw the free body diagram nehmi hi habit theva pahilanda ek vertical and horizontal line marun thevaychi manje अँगल मध्ये कधी घोळ होत नाही आपला अँगल हा व्हर्टिकल बरोबर घेतोय हॉरिझॉन्टल बरोबर घेतोय का एखाद्या दुसऱ्या लाईन बरोबर घेतोय दॅट वी विल कम टू नो विथ दिस हॉरिझॉन्टल अँड व्हर्टिकल लाईन ओके सो नाव दिस इज माय जॉईंट डी सो आय विल राईट हिअर डी सो ऍट जॉईंट डी नाव सी ऍट जॉईंट डी नीट बघा आता हे जॉईंट डी ऍट जॉईंट डी देर इज डाऊनवर्ड फोर्स ऑफ फॉर्टी किलो न्यूटन ओके सो वी हॅव टू शो दिस फोर्स देन इन मेंबर डी बी we don't know the force so initially ka assume karaycha tensile assume karaycha we don't know and this is the vertical member so that i will draw db member see here is the force of 40 kN so i will show this force this is the force of 40 kN 40 
and member db member db it is vertically upward it is vertically upward perfectly upward vertical member so this is the force in member db we don't know the force next is this side this is the member de we don't know the force so i assume it tensile so member de is a horizontal member so i will show here member de this is the horizontal member fde fde then what is remaining here now you can see here at member dc so the nature of force in member dc is compressive because arrow is you can see see the arrow which is near to the joint आता मी जॉईंट डी चा विचार करतोय ना तर या सी डी मेंबरचा जो ऍरो आहे तो डी च्या जवळचा ऍरो बघायचा हा ऍरो त्यासाठीच आपण हे ऍरो ड्रॉ केले ह्या ऍरो मला काय सांगतोय तर सी डी मधला फोर्स हा कसा आहे कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह टुवर्ड्स द जॉईंट सी द डायरेक्शन ऑफ दिस ऍरो टुवर्ड्स द जॉईंट कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह ओके सो मेंबर सी डी कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह सो हिअर आय विल शो अँड व्हॉट इज द व्हॅल्यू फॉर्टी किलो न्यूटन कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह सो हिअर इट इज कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह सो आय विल ड्रॉ द ऍरो टुवर्ड्स द जॉईंट ओके तिथे जसा मेन डायग्राम मध्ये ऍरो दिसतोय तसाच ऍरो मी ड्रॉ केलेला आहे सी ऍरो इज दिस ऍरो यू शुड कन्सिडर यू शुड कन्सिडर दिस ऍरो विच इज नियर टू द जॉईंट दिस ऍरो इट इज टुवर्ड्स द जॉईंट सो आय हॅव ड्रॉन सेम ओव्हर हिअर अँड द व्हॅल्यू ऑफ दिस इज फॉर्टी किलो न्यूटन आय विल राईट युअर डिरेक्टली फॉर्टी किलो न्यूटन बिकॉज वी नो द व्हॅल्यू ओके ना फॉर दिस जॉईंट ना इफ आय अप्लाय समेशन एफ वाय इक्वल टू झिरो upward positive downward negative now if i apply that what do i will get this 40 kilo newton moving down minus 40 plus fd moving up so fdb positive which is equal to 0 so therefore what is the value of fdb force in member db is 40 kilo newton okay and we have got the positive answer so it is tensile we have got the positive answer so it is tensile fdb so here i will go to the main diagram fdb i have got tensile force so tensile therefore arrow should be away from joint so with respect to joint b arrow should be away from joint so it it will be like this away from joint with respect to point d also arrow should be away from joint so it is like okay arrow should be away from joint for tensile now again further if i solve if i apply summation fx equal to 0 now so forces towards right are plus towards left are minus so now i will do here this is fde it is moving towards left so minus fde minus fde again this 40 kilo newton it is also moving towards left so minus 40 which is equal to 0 which is equal to 0 therefore fd if i shift this fd to the right hand side so fd is equal to minus 40 kilo newton so what is the meaning of minus 40 kilo newton so fd is initially it is 40 kilo newton obviously but this minus sign says us that it is not tensile force it must be compressive force so fd is again compressive force so compressive force if i want to show here fd is the compressive then arrow should be towards the joint so with respect to d now arrow must be towards the joint so this is the arrow towards the joint and with respect to e also now arrow must be towards the joint so this type of arrow towards the joint. okay so this is also solved this is the free body diagram of joint d so we have calculated the forces in members okay we have calculated in fcb then fcd these are our final answers fcd then this is fdb and then fde okay so up to this point we have solved right now anybody is having any doubt in this Joint D is very simple. There is no inclined force, inclined load. समझ लेगा काय केले ते? Yes, no. Yes, sir. समझ लेना ना? आज आते हैं उड़ा छोड़ो अपन. Joint C छोड़ो ले, joint D छोड़ो ले. We have solved both the joints. 
after the college hours when you do the study in the evening evening see that what is done in joint c and what is done in joint d okay ke arrow apan ashi ka dakhoto ita arrow ka dakhoto tar ata bag ami c joint sodavla ani c joint sodavla ar mi ja vela d joint la alo ta vela ita mi 40 draw kela hela pahila nda tensile assume kela hela pan tensile assume kela okay या डी बी ला मी टेन्साल अजून केलं डी ला पण टेन्साल अजून केलं कारण या दोघातला फोर्स मला माहिती नव्हता पण इथं बघा सी डी मधला फोर्स मला माहिती होता आणि हा अॅरो मी टुवर्ड्स जॉईंट दाखवलाय त्यामुळे मला मला हे कळलं की सी डी मधला फोर्स हा कसा आहे कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह फोर्स आहे सो टुवर्ड्स जॉईंट आणि डायरेक्ट मी इथं या फ्रीड वॉल डायग्राम मध्ये दाखवताना बघा इथं अॅरो बघा टुवर्ड्स जॉईंट घेतला डायरेक्ट त्या मेन डायग्राम वरून त्याला रेफर करून ओके आणि हे जर फॉर्टिक्युल न्यूटन तर व्हॅल्यू आपण ऑलरेडी कॅल्क्युलेट केलेली मग याला सॉल्व्ह केला आपण आपल्याला या व्हॅल्यूज मिळाल्या ओके सो इन दिस वे वी हॅव सॉल्व्ह टू जॉईंट सो इफ पॉसिबल यु कॅन सॉल्व्ह जॉईंट बी आता बघा आता जर मी बी जॉईंटचा विचार केला तर बी जॉईंटला या दोन फोर्स मधले व्हॅल्यू मला माहीत झाले दोन्ही टेन्साईल आहेत हा अॅरो बघा टेन्साईल म्हणजे बी डी हा टेन्साईल असणार आहे आणि डी बी सी पण टेन्साईल असणार आहे विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू बी आणि ह्याला पण टेन्साईल अॅज्युम करायचं इनिशियली आणि कॅल्क्युलेट करा निगेटिव्ह आन्सर आला तर हे कॉम्प्रेसिव्ह असणार आहे हा जॉईंट काय झाला ट्रस्ट सॉल्व्ह होईल म्हणजे हे दोनच मेंबर राहिलेत आता जमलं तर सॉल्व्ह करा अदरवाईज वी विल टुमॉरो वी विल सॉल्व्ह इट ओके सो नाव गिव्ह मी दस जस्ट अ मोमेंट रिमेनिंग पार्ट वी विल सी इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर Okay, one more thing. I have told you to to uh, download that Kahoot app in your mobile. But uh, right now, yesterday, uh, when I am surfing on that, I saw that it is paid now. Okay, for more than 10 students, it is paid app. Initially, when we are using that for the previous batches, it was free. But from this year, they have made it as a paid subscription. So, I will find out another app. which may be free for us to use free app for the quiz okay so if no, uh, sir ha huh. sir uh, we can use a uh, telegram quiz bot for uh, taking quiz it's free for but i i want that quiz which 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 should be live quiz you will see my screen sir, also and by seeing that screen you can give the answers from your mobile and that results also should display there after the uh, question who has given the correct answers that should be uh, uh, also displayed over there that type of app was there that kahoot which was free last year but now it is paid so same type of app i am searching okay so on that app if you if you also get that type of app then you can also tell me we can take it on this app okay tasa app jar me alo tar baka ki jacha madhe sagle tumhala on screen ata kasa on screen chalu hai इथं जे मी काय लिहितो इथं बोर्डवर ते तुम्हाला तिकडे दिसतंय तसं सेम वे त्या ऍप मध्ये व्हायला पाहिजे असा ऍप मी उडकतो अदरवाइज देन इट इज व्हेरी इझी सिम्पल इफ आय मेड अ गुगल फॉर्म अँड आय आय गिव्ह यू अ लिंक यू कॅन गो टू दॅट फॉर्म अँड यू कॅन गिव्ह द आन्सर दॅट इज देअर फॉर हा फॉर युनिट टेस्ट वी आर डुईंग दॅट काय म्हणताय क्विज वॉट प्रोव्हाइड टाइम लिमिट ड्युरेशन मीन्स वी कॅन स्टेट ड्युरेशन ऑफ थर्टी सेकंड मीन्स अकाउंट ऑफ पण असं लाईव्ह होत आहे का जसं आता स्क्रीन वर चालू आहे म्हणजे फक्त आपण इथं दाखवू शकत नाही लाईव्ह पण क्विज बॉट मध्ये जर आपण टाइम सेट केलं तर थर्टी सेकंड किंवा ट्वेंटी टाइम सेट होत आहे मला मला हे पाहिजे होत असं लाईव्ह लाईव्ह होत आहे का बघा तसं कुठला ऍप सर्च करा क्विझीज म्हणून एक आहे क्यू यू आय झेड आय झेड झेड तिथं पण जरा सर्च करून बघा क्विझीज हे काय आहे त्या वेबसाईट वरती जाऊन जरा ते पण एक ऍप आहे असे बघा जरा सर्च करून ठीक आहे But now we will take the attendance okay lecture 2 unit 3 as tarikh kiti hai what is the date today 16 16 okay uh, roll number 1 present 2 present sir 3 3 is present 4 present sir 5 present sir 
रोल नंबर सेवेन प्रेजेंट सर एट प्रेजेंट नाइन प्रेजेंट सर टेन प्रेजेंट सर इलेवेन प्रेजेंट सर ट्वेल्व थर्टीन प्रेजेंट सर फोर्टीन प्रेजेंट सर फिफ्टीन प्रेजेंट सर सिक्सटीन प्रेजेंट सर सेवेंटीन प्रेजेंट सर एटीन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी प्रेजेंट सर ट्वेंटी वन प्रेजेंट सर ट्वेंटी टू प्रेजेंट सर ट्वेंटी थ्री प्रेजेंट सर ट्वेंटी फोर प्रेजेंट सर ट्वेंटी फाइव प्रेजेंट सर ट्वेंटी सिक्स प्रेजेंट सर ट्वेंटी सेवेन प्रेजेंट सर ट्वेंटी एट प्रेजेंट ट्वेंटी नाइन प्रेजेंट सर थर्टी थर्टी वन प्रेजेंट सर थर्टी टू प्रेजेंट सर थर्टी थ्री प्रेजेंट सर थर्टी फोर प्रेजेंट सर थर्टी फाइव थर्टी सिक्स थर्टी सेवेन प्रेजेंट सर थर्टी एट प्रेजेंट सर थर्टी नाइन प्रेजेंट सर फोर्टी फोर्टी वन प्रेजेंट फोर्टी टू रोल नंबर फोर्टी टू फोर्टी थ्री प्रेजेंट सर फोर्टी फोर फोर्टी फोर इज एबसेंट फोर्टी फाइव प्रेजेंट सर फोर्टी सिक्स प्रेजेंट सर फोर्टी सेवन प्रेजेंट सर फोर्टी एट प्रेजेंट सर फोर्टी एट फोर्टी नाइन प्रेजेंट सर फिफ्टी प्रेजेंट सर फिफ्टी वन प्रेजेंट सर फिफ्टी टू प्रेजेंट सर फिफ्टी थ्री फिफ्टी थ्री इज प्रेजेंट ओके संकेत फोर फिफ्टी फोर Present sir, fifty five. Present sir, fifty six. Present sir, fifty seven. Present sir, fifty eight. Roll number fifty eight. Fifty nine. Present sir, sixty. Present sixty one. Present sir. Okay. So I will read the absent roll numbers once again. If anybody from these roll numbers is here, you can tell. Give me the attendance. Roll number is thirteen, one three, eighteen, thirty, thirty five, thirty six, forty two, forty four, and fifty eight. These are the absent roll numbers for today's lecture. Anybody from these roll numbers who is present but absent is marked. Okay, nobody is there. So today we will stop over here. Sir. Ha. Huh? Sir, I see uh, paper. Che answer ka tilka. Kutla answer pa ijat tu mala. Ah, uh, yam CQ che ani class problem hota sir to. Ah, uh, last problem that sphere. Ah uh, yes sir. Those two spheres, I think all of you have solved that problem correctly. Their RC will be five hundred, RD will be eight sixty six point sixty six. Then uh, R A and R B both reactions are one one five four and one two something. Okay, so uh, all of you have solved that problem correctly. But that problem about that question number, uh, I think three, that uh, beam problem was there. No, two point loads are given and one U D L is there. In that problem, many of you have made a mistake. It shows that you are not improving your English. You don't understand the problem. What is given in the problem? So we watch less. No problem. But the guy did it. Suki's diagram card. Lin Suki's a problem. So do it. Asa Barpur Zanani ke liye. So I will provide you the solutions within one two days. Okay. okay. Lecture me. Lecture shall be lecture. Me lecture hone ke baad aata hu na mujhe bata. Unke saath baitta hu pira. ऐसा ही क्या थोड़ा लेट हो जाओगे जाएगा फिर आता हूं
okay so i will give the solution hmm? we'll stop over here